I'm out in the chicken yard this evening. It is a kind of snowy, rainy combo evening. It's gonna warm up again soon, but uh, trying to do some tending to the chicken's needs right here. And also trying to think through some interesting design directions for this space, which is our winter run. We're gonna commit the west side of it to ginger. Let me explain. Folks that watch the channel know that this structure, which is a carport, it's a 12 foot by 20 foot by eight foot in the middle, uh, carport we got for free from our neighbors. We use scrap greenhouse poly to turn this into a winter run. We've been harvesting material out of here for filling air prune boxes and prepping garden beds. It worked incredibly well for the winter, but for the summer the hens won't need it as much and the rooster won't need it as much. And so we thought instead of getting rid of all of the compost that's in here, this four foot area is probably about two feet deep of aged compost with some heat still in it, what would it look like to have this entire space be committed to growing ginger, leaving the central walkway open for the hens on rainy nights, rainy days and the like, and this whole side to still be a composting pipeline, but that this would be committed to crops. It feels like this zone could be amazing for ginger for a few reasons. One, it's extremely, extremely fertile. There's still warmth underneath, which I think will help the ginger to sprout and buffer it from cold nights that we get periodically this time of year. Uh, it's also going to be uh, shaded a little bit from there's an oak tree up to the uh, south and to the east here that will cast some shade. The willows out here will cast a little bit of shade uh, and it's very well ventilated in here. So to get warm but not extremely warm in the summer, a little bit of shade in extremely fertile soil with radiant heat from the bottom. I couldn't imagine a happier context for them. But first order of business is framing out a way to keep the chickens from getting into the space. I have some little off cuts of lumber here that I can pre-drill and then screw into the wooden uprights to get this fencing material to hold tight against that. And I think that'll be tall enough to keep the hens out. Pretty ragamuffin approach, but so is pretty much everything going on around here, but it works. Uh, the two by four welded wire that's now four foot tall stock is battened into the uprights uh, and drawn taut just a little bit. There's a couple hens that are still in there trying to figure out how to leave, which they'll figure out. It's this far end here. This fence was cut just a tiny bit shy of what we would have liked, um, but we can figure that out with a little compost ring in there. This will be how we come and go is from uh, this one section here. And there'll be a walkway, a plank down the middle that will let me walk through. I think early in the season, we'll need a little bit of access in order to uh, do the planting, the mulching, some watering, maybe weeding. And then once it's up and running, we can probably just close this off and leave it. We got two last hens that need to figure out how to leave, and then we should be ready to plant. So now the work is just to get this walkway established again and do a little bit more cleanup, but not much. This has just got radiant warmth. It's probably like 70 or 80 degrees a little ways down in here. And it goes down like this for another 18 inches, almost two feet. So it's basically probably 10 yards of uh, rich, warm, organic matter. So the next move here is to go through and tidy up the compost, smooth it out so it's a nice seed bed to receive the ginger. I think we'll just lay the ginger out on top of it once we have it smoothed and then just cover it with more compost from over there rather than having to bury them in. There is the incredibly elegant latch system. The screw put into the upright and a loop of hay twine. Be annoying if I had to come and go in there all day every day, but I think we'll need to open it to plant the ginger. While it's open, we'll cover with some compost. And then I think I can water from the outside. So then really I would just need one more round of access to do some weeding. So I uh, should be ready to receive seed. This is organic ginger seed. We ordered this online, but I wonder if this was something we could have gotten from just a local co-op. This was $10 a pound. Looked really good, it kind of got a little dry, so we soaked it overnight under water, poured the water off this morning, uh, but I had split them a little bit. I know I could have theoretically split them a whole lot more than this, but this is what happened, and so this is the seed for this space. 
the soil is fluffy enough that I can kind of wiggle them in a little bit. I'm trying to give them eight to 12 inches. I'm guessing the common practice would be to give them more space, but I don't know. I'm gonna, maybe I'll give them a little more space on the far end and so we can learn which, which they prefer. But I'm guessing the limiting factor would generally be fertility, so a little closer might be okay. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. With soil so fluffy, it only took about two minutes to plant this all out. Did a little bit wider spacing in here, a little wider here, a little closer again at the far end. We'll see as they sprout up what seems to work the best. Um, there's a little bit of seed left. And so what I might end up doing is trialing a couple rings outside. We've got those compost rings that we work with maybe one or two that are radiating a lot of heat, we can put some soil on top and plant them into that. But that's its own experiment. We got a little left over, so we might as well. Now I just need to cover it with some compost and mulch to retain the heat of the radiant compost from underneath and wait and see. The compost on this side, this is the other side, is quite a bit hotter up on the top. So I'm just scooping with the hay fork here and throwing it over into there so that I can't see the ginger. I'm seeing a little steam coming off, so they'll get a little bit of radiant warmth from that. And with a nice layer of hay on top, that should be everything we need to get them going. I don't think it needs to be watered in. Maybe you can see the steam behind me, but in digging out from this side and transferring it over to that side, there's definitely a lot of heat that got loosened up. Um, but now the ginger's plugged in pretty much fully covered with at least an inch or two of compost that's got some heat, and I'll put some hay on top. A quarter bale of hay and the ginger is tucked in. This whole project was not more than an hour, which is sweet. The infrastructure is already here. And something that I want to be careful of is to not box the hens out of having access to this space. So this will get started. It'll keep them out. Some big questions that I have Will they be able to jump up and in? I suspect not, but we could, that's part of the reason why I battened this low. We could bend this out a bit to make it harder for them to get up. We could always add some more netting up here. That's one question. Another question would be, is there enough warmth coming out of this compost to help the ginger sprout, despite the fact that we're in New York State in mid-April and the temperatures fluctuate. It's raining and a little snowy right now outside, but it's definitely a lot warmer in here. More questions would be, is there enough uh, light for them? I suspect that'll be the case, but well, that remains to be seen. And just is the whole thing reasonable. So uh, I'd love to hear your feedback. Does this feel like a ridiculous idea? For those of you that grow ginger commercially, am I just an absolute fool? This is our first year uh, trying to grow ginger in a real way. We bought in 20 pounds of seed. This is one of many, many different experiments in how we're going to try growing it. Uh, so we'll share notes on other ways that we explore this. It feels reasonable and practical to me and important to know if we can avoid the, the heating mats and the lights and all that kind of stuff and just grow it in this space. The chickens will have this center run, they'll have this other side, so we're not taking everything from them. And I think what I might do as a gesture of thanks to them uh, losing this space for the summer is plug in some cucumber uh, and uh, climbing beans just on the inside to climb up on this fence that we can harvest and send to them. Maybe we'll harvest some for ourselves, but as a nice treat for them, <laughs> for the fact that they're losing a third of one of their favorite spots in the yard. All right, that's my little update on ginger experiments for tonight. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Let me know what your thoughts are and we'll definitely share updates on how this works. Once it starts sprouting, uh, I feel like if it starts to cool off and it's not really sprouting, I might water it because I think there's still a fair bit of latent heat that could wake up. The compost was a little bit dry, but I didn't want to err on the side of too wet too fast. Um, but that's our experiment with one round of ginger and we'll do a chicken update pretty soon. I'll give a minute or two of chicken TV here for those of you that enjoy that the most. Thank <laughs> you. 
Sorry, man. A little too too long of a ride. 